It is 6 a.m. in the morning, and this is the second Patagonia video from our 2023 series. Oh, I gotta stop these super early morning intros. And uh, we're going hiking again, which is awesome. We're going to the hidden waterfall up towards Laguna de los Tres in El Chaltén, Argentina. All starts right now. Let's go. Beautiful. Look at that. Hiking poles. Can hold these for you. You forgot your coat? This is the bag you were talking about, right, Ike? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. This is where we are. This is the uphill part. That's pretty uh, challenging. And this is a beautiful view along here, which is the Rio de las Vueltas. That's the road we were driving yesterday. And then we keep going uphill until a break in the uh, trail. And we're gonna go this way towards Laguna Capri, which is a really beautiful small lake and campsite. And then we keep going this way and we actually jerk, like kind of jut off the trail here and we go towards the Rio uh, Chorio de Salto, which is the same one where the waterfall is down here. And that's where the waterfall is that we're going to today. And a very popular hike is to go all the way up to here, which is Laguna de los Tres and Laguna Sucia. And Fitzroy is right in the middle. And that's a really beautiful uh, photo, but it's quite a long way. Stars are amazing. Absolutely incredible. What number is it? Three. Number three. Okay. You up we go. Up up up. Towards Laguna Capri. The hidden waterfall. Oh, I see some lights on the trail. Good morning! Welcome to the Secret Waterfall, which is a place that me and Greg have named officially on Google Maps. It's the Secret Waterfall. That's pretty Woo. cool, right? Props. We, we've both simultaneously ruined this place and named it. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Um, let me make sure Ike's okay. So yeah, yeah, please. Exactly. Ike, uh... Good morning from the Hidden Waterfall. We have made it and uh, Secret Waterfall. Secret waterfall. That's what Brendan's saying, we've named it. When did we name this? In 2017? <laughs> yeah, nice. Very modest of you, it Mr. Van Son. It wasn't on Google Maps. Oh, I don't think they can, they can't hear you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's blame T. Heaton. Let's blame T. Thomas Heaton is what Brendan's saying. Right, right, yeah. All right, and uh, this is a very, very simple composition. I've set up a two-shot focus stack now the a7r5 does do focus bracketing or uh, focus stacking within the camera and uh, i think it will be useful with wide angle with you know, the subject really close to the lens uh, but in this case you know the waterfall is relatively far away and i have sorry it's tight here i've got this one little orange tree in my foreground and then obviously the waterfall and the peak in the background so I've just done a two shot focus bracket, manually focusing on the little tree and then manually focusing essentially to affinity. I could have a medium focus on the waterfall, but at F11, it's not really necessary. I think just with the two, it'll stack together really well. Now I have also got this photo from years past. So I think I'm gonna try and take advantage of our time here this morning and move a little bit higher up on top of that rock and see if I can get a little bit of a different composition on the same scene.
And it is that time again. We are leaving the hidden waterfall. Beautiful view of Fitzroy behind me. I can see the reflection in the lens. It looks really cool. And uh, this is another classic spot here in Patagonia. And I wanted to share a bit more information with you guys in this series about the uh, the tourism aspect of, uh, of this area because this is a hiking paradise. Like the hiking and trekking along these back valleys here is really, really good. And the trails are extremely well marked and they're uh, well maintained. And it's just a beautiful park to walk through. And you can do, you know, multiple day circuits with, uh, with even some ice if you want to get up behind Fitzroy into the Patagonian ice shelf. I believe that there's a guiding service that can, can do that as well. So you can do sort of a circuit around the entire area. But there are a ton of, uh, of nice campsites that you can, uh, you know, set up a tent and uh, cook and then give yourself the accessibility to shoot a lot more astro here as well. So for us as photographers getting up super early in the morning and doing these hikes in the dark is the best way to access locations to be able to shoot sunrise. But also if you want to come here and do some camping, you know, that's a, another really great way because you're a lot closer to the locations. And if you're already camping, then you can get up uh, whenever you want, right? So and not have to hike all that far, but it is uh, a beautiful place for just your everyday kind of trekking day hikes and uh, exploring the natural wilderness of Patagonia. Now we're heading back down and then we're going to hit the road. We are heading into Chile today. So about a six hour drive ahead of us, heading to Torres del Paine. Got a little hidden gem here behind me. This is a, uh, a small lagoon on the backside of Lagoa Capri. And the uh, the reeds are catching this uh, this light. It's very overexposed. You can see uh, the photo that I've just showed you with a perfect reflection, absolutely perfect. And uh, that was very, very cool. Nice little bonus photo. And I knew this place was here, but uh, I actually don't come this way too often. I usually go the way of uh, Laguna Capri. So that was amazing. You guys can come this way. Yeah. Yo. I have to go back. Yeah. I run. I don't mind. What's wrong? You burn. Is it overexposed? Mm, it's on the edge. Yeah. Can you see your histogram? If you press info again. Yeah, it's close, but it's not clipping. But it's very close. So should I take it again? Uh, Am I doing yeah. Now? Go ahead. Handheld. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hand out, and then come and get us up this hill, okay? And our journey continues here downhill en route back to El Chalten. And what an absolutely magical forest. This is incredible. Another great weather day. But what you haven't seen on the vlog is that the last two days were actually pretty shit. So the weather really uh, socked in on us here and there was wind and rain for a couple days. It's a storm that I mentioned at the end of the last video and uh, it really took down a lot of the leaves. So we are just too late right now, unfortunately. There's still some color, but it's really sporadic as you can see in, in both the last video and this video. But those, those two storm days really took a lot of the leaves down, which is tough for us. It's not ideal. You know, it's a very small window here uh, when it comes to the fall colors, but I think still we've been able to make the most of it. And uh, definitely that first day in El Chal 10, the, the last video, if you haven't seen it, check that out. That we, uh, we absolutely made the most of our time there going to Laguna Torre. And uh, here today with this beautiful sunrise has been uh, pretty nice, but it's time indeed for us to move on. So next stop, Torres del Paine in Chile. Thank you. 
So it is right about here that I would start to do the outro to this video. And I filmed the outro and then realized that there was no audio. But I realized that there's no audio here in the future. So I've been editing this video back home and uh, realized that for some reason, the DJI mic did not pick up the audio. I'm sure it is user error because that is uh, the second time only that I've used the mic in the field. I bought the mic specifically for this trip because I was having some problems with my Rode video mic and uh, it was time to make a change anyway. And so far I have been very, very happy with this DJI setup but I am obviously still on that learning curve, especially down in Patagonia with this series right now. So uh, I'm recording this outro now to give you a little bit more information about the secret waterfall and about the geography of uh, the area around El Chalten in general, because El Chalten, the town itself, is located in the northern part of Los Glaciares National Park, which is in Argentina. It includes Perito Moreno and a big chunk of the Southern Patagonian ice field, which is, I believe, the third biggest in the world after Antarctica and Greenland. So it is a uh, massive ice field you know, full of glaciers and those glaciers kind of come down into the valleys on the Chilean side, they go right into the sea. And on the Argentinian side, they create these amazing lakes going into the, um, what do you call it, the Badlands? No, like the foothills of the Andes uh, and then down to the Patagonian steppe. So the geography itself is extremely interesting. I go into a lot more detail about it when we're actually in Patagonia, uh, but for you at home, if you're interested, you know, Fitzroy and uh, Cerro Torre are granite spires, really hard rock, very, very good for rock climbing, and it attracts a lot of professional and uh, adventure rock climbers from all over the world to go down there and try and summit both uh, Cerro Torre and Fitzroy. Now, the area around those mountains has been you know, shaped and carved by these glaciers for hundreds of years and uh, it's created these amazing alpine lakes. That's where you've got uh, Lago de los Tres at the base of Fitzroy, Lago Susia, also at the base of Fitzroy, but on the other side, uh, Lago Torre, where we were in the last video, and Lago Laguna Capri, all these little smaller lagoons that are all fed by the rivers that are coming off of the glaciers, which then eventually flow down to Rio Fitzroy and Rio de las Vueltas, which are uh, two rivers that kind of create the valley that El Chalten sits it at the base of, eventually flows into a big lake and then another river and then the Atlantic Ocean. So it's, uh, it's a whole big ecosystem. And luckily for us, it is a national park and it's been protected. And there are a ton of very, very good hiking trails uh, one of which the secret waterfall is just off of. So it's not exactly on the trail, but it's very, very close to the trail. And I do expect the national parks to sort of create a little jut off of the trail with signs that actually say, you know, here is the waterfall uh, because it is getting so popular and there's so many people visiting it, especially photographers in the morning. Uh, but it is for a good reason because it's not very far from El Chaltan town. It's only 4.5 kilometers, give or take. So when you uh, start the uh, Sendero Fitzroy, uh, it takes about 4K to get to Laguna Capri. And the first like hour of that is relatively difficult, but not, not too bad. So you know, like a kilometer and a half, two kilometers uphill, and then it sort of flattens out through the forest. And then once you get to Laguna Capri, it's only about 500 meters from that campsite and you'll hear the river, it's just off of the trail. And from there you have this perfect view of Fitzroy uh, being lit up by the sunrise and it's just a perfect photo. So very cool location and definitely not a secret anymore. And that's totally fine as long as the area is treated with continued respect. And again, I do expect the national parks to probably end up creating a little trail because it's already quite obvious uh, on how to get there anyway. So uh, cool location, good conditions for us. Not a lot of clouds, but at least we got a nice sunrise. It was relatively busy, which is why I titled this video, The Not So Secret Waterfall, but uh, that doesn't bother me. I don't think it should bother us again, as long as it's uh, treated with respect. And uh, most people are there to enjoy the nature anyway. So that's what they're getting, this beautiful scene in a beautiful part of the world in an awesome national park. So our uh, journey across Patagonia continues. We're heading today towards uh, Torres del Paine in Chile, and we got one full day of very, very good light. So I was lucky enough to vlog that day. So the next video coming up is uh, Arrival Torres del Paine, one full day of good light and uh, lots of nice photos to share with you from that location. And then the fourth video as part of this series is a really fun one where we are going to uh, reintroduce the art, the fine art, the art of fine art photography 
let's say it's something along those lines. So I'll see you in the next two videos, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.